Hello everyone, this is Ryan from Amnesty, and I'm going to show you Babylon. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name, because I do not know how to pronounce it. So, uh, I'll show you the victory conditions I'd recommend if you were to play Babylon. I'll show you the social policies I'd recommend, and also his two special units. Or in this case, one unit and one uh, uh, building. So, he has ingenuity, which means he receives a free great scientist when you discover writing. Earn great scientists 50% faster, so essentially that goes without saying. You're going to want to play this in a scientific victory. By far, no doubts about it. So, the four victory types, again, are definitely going to be science number one. And then, to be completely honest, the three other victory conditions really aren't that viable. Um, I would recommend diplomatic as being the second one. Only reason being is because you're going, if you play this right, you will be the most technologically advanced civilization in your game. So you'll kind of have an edge up on everybody, and usually if you upgrade your units while you do that as well, uh, AI will kind of be frightened by you, not all the time, just because your units are better than their sheer number of useless units. So, with that being said, sometimes they'll be more diplomatic with you, sometimes you can get city-states to be, be your friend, so you can do it that way, but I, I really wouldn't recommend it. And third, I'd recommend culture. Again, that, that's really not a very good one, because as Babylon, you're going to want to expand. The more cities you have, the more science you're going to get, and you want that, because you want the great scientists, you want free you know, academies in your land, you want free technology. That is the premise of Babylon. So cultural, really wouldn't recommend it. It, it is doable, but it's, it's more difficult than most. And then lastly is domination. He has no... A no personality trait that helps you in that regards. His units aren't meant for offense. They're very, very good defensive units. And there's a reason for it. You want to defend what you know, essentially. So, you have the Bowman and the Walls of Babylon, and those two kind of give you a hint that you're not really going to go for domination. So, I will now show you the Bowman and the Walls of Babylon. So the Bowman, he has 40 production, or 80 faith to produce. He's an archery unit, he's got a combat strength of 7, a range combat of 9, a range of 2, and a movement of 2. So essentially what that means is always a bowman does not want to get up close and personal to a spearman, otherwise he will probably die. If you are a tile away, that is very good, because that's what you want to do. He has a com range combat of 9, meaning he can really bust that spearman's ass. So, he is a replacement for the archer, I believe, yes. And then he upgrades to a composite bowman, which is relatively fast. Again, if you're playing on a marathon speed, it's not that fast. But if you're playing on a regular kind of speed, it is very fast. The bowman does not last very long, but he is a very, very strong unit from the beginning. Defensively, defensively at least, not so much offensively. And then the second unit that they have is the Walls of Babylon, which will cost you 65 production. gives you 6 extra defense at plus 100 HP, and it replaces the Walls. And just to show you in comparison, the walls only give you 5 extra defense and plus 50 HP, so you pretty much get double out of the walls of Babylon. Again, clearly a huge benefit to defense, and again, there's a reason for it. You are going to know a lot. You are going to be technologi technologically advanced compared to anybody else. So you're going to want to protect it. You will want to build lots of cities, in my opinion. Why is that? because you have the defense to do so. So if someone does attack you, you should be good to go in defense. So as long as you build a cheap longbowman, or, uh, or even the walls of Babylon. Anyway, now I will show you the social policy I'd recommend if you were to play Babylon. Before I show you any social policies, I will tell you about Babylon's start bias. Now this is somewhat unique to what Babylon will have. You will be in the plains. Generally you'll be in more desert tiles as well. Generally, you will have incense and copper. Now, normally, you won't exactly be in the forest or plains. Some, well, you will be in the plains, but not the forests. Generally. Sometimes you are. Normally, you won't exactly see deer either. But anyway, now I will show you the social policies I'd recommend if you were to play Babylon. Uh, definitely would be liberty. Liberty is number one. Why is that? It'll give you a rapid expansion. You'll get plus one culture in every city. If you fill the whole track, you'll get a great person of your choice. Now I would either choose, out of that selection, a great scientist or a great engineer, depending what you need. Um, 
And again, you'll get a worker. He'll work quicker for you. You get a settler. The settlers will be produced quicker. Your cities will produce, in general, more than not. And then later on, once you are able to get into the Renaissance era, you should definitely go for rationalism. There's no reason to not go for it. And just in case you wonder why would you want to go with rationalism, it's because you, once you are able to fill out the whole track, you will get two free technologies, which is huge. Because by that time, not only are you going to be really smart, but adding two more technologies, you will really surpass everybody in technology at that point, and it will really show. Chances are you'll probably be in the next era before a computer player is. Now granted, if you play on Immortal or Deity, well, you'll probably be keeping up with everybody. But, again, I'm not basing it on that. So, again, rationalism will give you tons of science, and... Scientific Revolution will boost your science gain from research agreements by 50%. So you will want to be friendly with some civilizations, make some uh, science agreements with people, so that way you are able to get even more. Another quick tip too, if you are able to get the Porcelain Tower at any point, that also increases the research from agreements by, I believe, 50%. So you have that and this, it's 100%. So it is crazy how much technology you are able to get. And I would definitely say Babylon is by far the staple of a scientific victory. So if you find him in a game, watch out for that, because he usually does go for science. Um, so that, that, that'll wrap up Babylon. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please rate, subscribe, and comment. And uh, check out my other videos.